Hello and welcome to RT Ministries. My name is Dwayne and this is the Bible study portion of RT Ministries. And today we are in Psalm 21. And this is a psalm of victory. Through a war, the king got victory and he gives God glory. And the whole thing's about the king getting victory and his army getting victory. But there's a lot we can learn as Christians through here too. Because anytime you get victory, it's because of the Lord. So Psalm 21. Um, verse 1, to the choir master, a psalm of David. O Lord, in your strength the king rejoices. Okay, the king rejoiced not in his own strength, and this is why the battle was won. He rejoiced in the strength of God. And look, people are depressed in this country. People are depressed all over the world. People are wondering why they're in defeat all the time when they are counting on their own strength. You know, O oh Lord, in your strength, the king rejoices. And look, Christian, in, in your life, you should be rejoicing over the strength of your king, not you, because none of us are strong if you think you're strong. The Bible says you're ready to fall, right? When you know you're nothing, right? When you know you're nothing, then you're ready. Then God will work through you. He'll prune you. Well, when you think you're something, you, you don't think you need much pruning. You don't go to God much. You trust more and rely more on yourself. But listen, the, the king rejoiced in the strength of the Lord, not himself. And in your salvation, how greatly he exalts. And again, I've said this before, but all Christians have much to rejoice if they're just saved. If nothing else good happened to you ever in this world, you have reason to rejoice because you're saved. You know, the Lord has saved me 22 years ago, and I rejoice in that fact, and there's nothing sweeter than salvation. It sours, though, when you get your mind off the Lord and get your mind on the life, and you get your mind on yourself, and you stop denying yourself, you stop picking up your cross, and you stop falling in. Then, then life sours a little bit. And in your salvation, how greatly he exalts, and I exalt, I hope you exalt the Lord in your salvation. And praise his holy name. Verse 2, you have given him his heart's desire and have not withheld the request of his lips. You know, the Bible says God will give you desires of your heart. If your desires are in line with God, God over the years has given me much more than I've asked. Exceedingly abundantly above what you ask, right? And I, I know that for a fact because I've lived it. God has given me more than the desires of my heart. My desires is not for money and all that other stuff, though. My desire is to please him, and I hope that's your desire. And if you're wondering why you're off, and you can honestly say, gee, my desire is not to please him, well, <laughs> there's a reason your life's off. you got to put him first. So God has given his heart's desire and not withheld the request of his lips. God... Many things, you know, there's some things God withheld from me that I asked because it wasn't for, wasn't in his will and it wasn't for my good. So, but God has overall abundantly given me, abundantly above anything I've asked, more than I deserved. And I know, you know, if you humble yourself, you humble yourself, you'll understand you have gotten more than you deserve too. Verse three, for you meet him with rich blessings, and that's the truth. If you know the Lord, you should be able to say this. Lord, the Lord has met me with rich blessing. You set a crown of fine gold upon his head. <laughs> king's got more than he ever desired. The king has got more riches than he ever desired. The, you know, set a crown of fine gold upon your head. And I don't have a literal crown of gold on my head. But salvation has given me more than gold can ever give me. For he asked life of you and you gave it to him. Length of days forever and ever. And surely when you're going out to battle like this king was, he asked God to <laughs> not get killed, obviously, to, to extend his life through it. So, And you gave it to him. Length of days forever and ever. You know, I'm ready to meet the Lord whenever the Lord wants to come get me. If you put him first and you love him, you want to meet him. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you have on this earth. You know, America has many distractions, and there's many distractions all around the world. But if the Lord chooses to lengthen my days well into my 60s and 70s, that's up to Him. If the Lord chooses to shorten my days, that's okay too. I love Him either way, and trust Him either way. 
and so should you. Five, his glory is great through your salvation, and that's for sure. You know, the fact that God saved me, a sinner like me, and somebody who is vile and evil like me and wicked like me over the years, and he chose to save me. God gets the glory for me. Everything I've done, everything I say, everything I do, he gets the glory because it's not me. It's him working through me. And if anything, you've done any good since you've been saved, it's God working through you. Splendor and majesty you bestow on him, and God has given me more splendor than I deserve. And frankly, any splendor you get in this life is more than you deserve. So, you know, if you don't expect much, anything you get will be a blessing. It's the people who expect much that hmm, not much is a blessing because they think they deserve more. Keep yourself low, then you will never be in that position. Six, for you make him most blessed forever. And, you know, I'm going to be most blessed forever. I... If you're saved, you're going to be the most blessed forever in eternity. I'll be blessed through eternity just by being saved. You make him glad with the joy of your presence. And I hope all Christians will want to feel God's presence in this lifetime. Your most, your personal time with the Lord, your intimate time with the Lord. I, I love to feel God's presence. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I don't run my whole Christian life off feelings because sometimes they disappear. Frankly, sometimes I don't feel real good about life. So, But I'm glad whenever I do feel his presence. Seven, for the king trusts in the Lord. And I hope, you know, when you die, I hope somebody can say that at your funeral. When you're in a casket, somebody could say, he trusted in the Lord. <laughs> On my tomb, they can write, Dwayne trusted in the Lord. And I hope they can say that about you. And through the steadfast love of the Most High, he shall not be moved. And... You know, the steadfast love of the Most High, I love that, I love this uh, wording. I love the Most High, but the steadfast love. This is the kind of love that God has. When He chooses to love you, He doesn't pull it back. When you choose to do sin, He doesn't pull it back. Circumstances don't make God pull back His love until you do better. Which a lot of people think that's God, but that's not. It's a steadfast love, it's a constant flowing love to you. And granted, sometimes that love, through love, chastises you to bring you back to your senses, to bring you out of sin, to bring you, you know, to better you. Sanctification. Eight, your hands will find, that, find out all your enemies. Your right hand will find those who hate you. You know, being a Christian, we don't deal with our enemies. We let God deal with them. We're not supposed to, you know, pick up arms and and kill people. We're supposed to let God deal with that part. We're supposed to love our enemies, right? Jesus said, love those who persecute you. Pray for those who persecute you. You're supposed to love your enemy, right? God will deal with your enemies someday. You will make them as a blazing oven when you appear. The Lord will swallow them up in his wrath and fire will consume them. You know, this whole verse 9 pictures an oven of fire. The Lord will swallow them up in his wrath. Someday the Lord is going to dish out what people deserve. So if people are persecuting you, if people are hurting you, if people are killing you, if people are, whatever they're doing, if they don't turn, God's wrath will consume them someday. And the fire of hell will consume them forever. So this is why the Bible says, God said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. And I assure you, Listen to me closely. I assure you, God can repay people better than you can. He, they will get exactly what they deserve. Ten, you will destroy their descendants from the earth and their offspring from among the children of man. This is how far he's going to destroy the wicked. They'll be destroyed from the face of the earth. There'll be nothing left of them. And then, though they plan evil against you, there's a lot of people planning evil against Christians all over the world. Though they devise mischief, there's a lot of people devising mischief and evil against all Christians, they will not succeed. They say, well, Dwayne, some people do succeed. They do kill people. They do exactly do evil. They do play a mischief, and they actually do the mischief. When it says they will not succeed, it means eternally. It means forthrightly. It means that they will not succeed with their whole plans because God will deal with them. And it doesn't mean you will not get persecuted. It doesn't mean you will not get killed. But their overall plans will not succeed. Satan has plans has not succeeded yet. 
He's going to build up the Antichrist one day, and that won't succeed. Why? 12. For you will put them to flight. You will aim at their faces with your bows. This is why, because God deals with them directly. You put them to flight, meaning just destroy them. You will aim at their faces with your bows. You know, you aim a gun or a bow at somebody's face, it's meant to totally destroy. And this is what God's going to do to them. That's why they don't succeed. Because, listen, Christian, if somebody is planning evil mischief against you, they're planning against the Lord. They're going up against Christ himself. Because Christ is in you, right? So, hold fast. Let God deal with your enemies. If they kill you, Listen, if you get killed by an evil person, you've just doubled your, your rewards in heaven. So they're not doing you any harm. They can take, you know, they're not supposed to fear those who can kill the body. But after that, you know, could do nothing. The worst anybody in this world could do to you is kill you. God is in control and God will deal with people. You need to trust him. You know, and the psalm ends with praise. Be exalted, O Lord. Every night you should say this before you go to bed. Be exalted, O Lord. In this rotten, filthy universe, Lord, I exalt you in your strength. Lord, I exalt you in your strength. Thank you for keeping me strong today. I exalt your holy name. We will sing and praise your power. You know, we don't sing and praise God's power that much anymore. Listen, God's got plenty of power that should be praised. He's the most powerful being in this universe. Nothing comes close to him. His power brought this universe together. We will sing and praise your power. If you don't know what to praise God for, praise him for his power. If you don't know what to sing, <laughs> sing and praise God for his power. You know, this whole thing is about victory. A king in war getting victory because he trusted in the Lord the whole way through. And listen, you'll have victory if you trust in Jesus Christ. And him alone, and what he did on that cross your whole way through. You will end in praise and exaltation of God at the end of your life. There's no fear. You don't have to fear death. You don't have to fear your enemies. You don't have to fear anything. With the biggest person with God on your side, what can man do? What can, what, who should you fear? Just fear God. The Bible says to fear God, give him glory. So It's a great hymn. It's a great psalm you know just exalt god for all your victories because there is victory in christ right it's like the song says victory in jesus <laughs> if you're in christ you have victory already you've already won so exalt god we'll sing and praise his power tonight thanks for tuning in i'll see you next time bye